Right, so hello. I don't know if you even still remember me, <laughs> but yeah, I used to make videos here about books and I thought the media book freakout tag would be a good way to kind of summarize the first half of the year when it comes to reading. Also, you probably will notice that I keep looking at the, at the viewfinder instead of the camera because I have a different camera and I'm not used to it. The lighting might be terrible, I'm not sure. So yeah, there's just a lot of adjusting, so bear with me. <laughs> so uh, I have a laptop on my lap, so I'll be looking down a lot. But yeah, let's get started. The first question is, best book you've read so far this year? And I have three. First one would be House of Mirth by Eddie Wharton. This is my first Eddie Wharton I've ever read, and it was amazing. I love her writing. I love the characters because they're so... They're all so flawed, but they're so interesting. The ending was a little bit melodramatic, uh, but still I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. The second book is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. It's my second book by Sarah Waters, and I just, I love... I'm not a huge fan of historical fiction, but the way Sarah Waters writes historical fiction, it just, it feels so real, like, you, it feels very well researched. The story is very, is rather fast paced and yeah there was a lot of plot twists in this book. I still think I like Tipping the Velvet a little bit more because Tipping the Velvet talks a lot about theatre and performing and th I find it really interesting. Yeah this was kind of a mystery with a lot of uh, twists and turns and I really recommend it. And the last one I listened to on audiobook and that is The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. Yeah, this is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice from Mary's perspective. I personally preferred the first half to the second half, but actually like the events from uh, Pride and Prejudice don't take up much of the book. I mean, I'd say probably like 30% and then we, you know, see how Mary's life turned out after, you know, the events from Pride and Prejudice, so that was very, very interesting. And then we have uh, Best Sequel I've read so far. I haven't read that many sequels, so the best sequel I've read so far would be probably Volume 3 of Heartstrings by Alice Osman. Yeah, it's just, it's a graphic novel, I love it. It's the third volume, so I can't really tell you much about it. Am I in focus? God, I hope so. <laughs> and the other one, I liked a little bit less uh, that that is uh, the vanishing star, star, the vanishing star by Warren Johnson. Um, this this is a, a sequel to Truly Devious. I liked Truly Devious a little bit more. I gave Truly Devious four stars, and this one like three, three point five stars. I have to say, Maureen Johnson, or at least this series, she writes. Every time I'm re reading one of those books, I'm kind of not really sold on the premise or like on the characters uh, in the first half and I'm, and I'm always kind of on the verge of DNFing it and then I keep reading and I'm just kind of like oh yeah this is getting interesting and then the end happens and it's always a cliffhanger and I'm always like well now I have to read the next book so <laughs> good job Marion Johnson <laughs> yeah I'm definitely going to read uh, the next one is it a trilogy or is there going to be like more books I hope not <laughs> Okay, new release you haven't read yet, but one too. Uh, the Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. <sighs> Emily St. John Mandel is like my favorite contemporary author, and I've read everything by her except for this new release. I just I pre-ordered it, and it came out in uh, like middle of March, I think. And the edition that I pre-ordered, they didn't have in stock because probably because of the pandemic. And they didn't really use, like, book the first story, didn't, like, send me an email or anything. So, like, about two or three weeks after the release, I asked, like, what's up with my book? And did I say it? They don't have it in stock, but, like, when it's there, they will send it. And then, like, a month and a half uh, gone by, and they still didn't have it. So I asked them to, like, refund me the money. Um, so, yeah, I don't have it. I really would love to read it, but I could read, uh, I could listen to it on audiobook because I think script has it. But I really want to like read it with my own eyes. But yeah, also I, I really want uh, this specific edition. I'm going to show it on the screen somewhere. <laughs> oh no, I'm out of focus. So yeah, and it's I, I can't find it anywhere. 
What? What are you doing? Okay. The next question, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I don't know much about this book, but uh, is Transcendent Kingdom by uh, Jesse or Jesse. I've read Homegoing a few years ago and I loved it, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Uh, biggest disappointment. Ooh, I have a few. <laughs> so, the first one would be um, Us Against You by Friedrich Bachmann. Um, this is a sequel to... Burton. <laughs> that was so bad. I like Burton was one of my favorite books of 2018 and that was garbage. It was just so cliched, uh, the characters were so one-dimensional. <sighs> I'm still probably going to read the third book, like, let's not kid ourselves, but yeah, that was bad. Uh, then we have What Matters in Jane Austen, 20 Crucial Puzzles Solved by John Mullen. I mean, I gave it three stars, so it's not like the worst book I've ever read. But it was disappointing because I love Jane Austen, I've read all of her novels. And I was... there were a few chapters there that I actually enjoyed. But most of them I was like, yeah, I've read the book, I know that. Like, it wasn't surprising at all. Oh, like, there was a chapter, What Makes Characters Blush. So basically what would be considered or like embarrassing in a 19th century society. And yeah, there was there were a few chapters where that were actually surprising. One that comes to mind uh, is the one about seaside. I don't remember the title of the chapter, but yeah, that was I because there was a lot of historical context in this chapter that I didn't know about. So I felt like I actually like learned something new and I wish like the whole book was like that. Then we have The Humans but Matt Haig, I DNF'd it. I really didn't like the writing style. I, I don't have much to say, I just... Um, it was dumb. <laughs> then we have The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. Wa Walker? 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 <laughs> this was disappointing like more than anything because it's about a town where people like start falling asleep and not waking up uh, so it is a little bit like a pandemic i think when i was reading it the uh, you know covid was like starting in china so like i was aware of covid and i knew that like it would probably get to other countries so it was at the back of my mind but at that time i didn't think it would be such a big issue for like literally every country in the world so yeah, it was it was an interesting experience reading it. I didn't like it. I felt like it kind of went nowhere. Like I read it and I was like, so what? <laughs> uh, okay, next we have Bright's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh, and that book. Okay, it was I think it was pretty well written. I quite liked the prose. Um, I was intrigued by the characters, but the the further I got, the the more I was like, okay where is this going? Like, I had no idea. It was one of those books where I was like, I... we were kind of meandering here and there, like, following those different characters, but I was like, what is the point? And then the ending happened, and I was so angry, like, you have no idea. I was like, this is where this was going? It... okay, so throughout the whole... I, I don't think it's a spoiler. Also, I feel like if you're not reading closely enough, you might actually miss it because it's not very um, straightforward. But throughout the whole book, uh, if I remember correctly, the main character is an atheist, or like, he's not really very religious. And then, at the end, this en ending takes a very, like, religious turn, and I was like, <laughs> why? <laughs> so, and la lastly, we have A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne, which I actually um, finished quite recently, like, two, two days ago. And then, that's probably the worst book. I mean, Bryce has revisited is a strong contender, but Letter to the Sky is probably the worst book I read this year. The characters were so one-dimensional. The writing style was not that special, and I loved Hearts Invisible Furies. So, I'm just really confused what happened there. It was so predictable, too. So, yeah. I've heard people saying that it's full like of twists and turns, and I'm just like, where? <laughs> then we have biggest surprise. Uh, I would have to say that House of Mirth by um, Eddie Wharton was quite a surprise. Like, I've never read anything by her. Also, I think uh, The Age of Innocence is more 
popular, like well-known book by her, but I couldn't get my hands on the edition that I wanted, so I started with this one, and I loved it. I'm looking forward to reading uh, more of her books. Then we have... oh, that's what I wrote. I wrote Truly Devious and Van The Vanishing Star by Martin Johnson. I feel like more Truly Devious was a surprise for me, because it's a YA, uh, so I was like, mm, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm going to like it. But yeah, like I said, the endings are always kind of cliffhangers, so you're always left with like, well, I have to know what happens next. I always find, I have to say, I always found the chapters written uh, like in the past more interesting than those um, in the present, but that's just me. Oh yeah, also biggest surprise, also another one would be I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. This was a surprise, I gave it four stars, but this was a surprise mostly because it's considered to be horror and I thought I didn't like horror, but like this was actually really good. I, I, I really liked it and I really want to try more horror books. I'm thinking about reading Bunny. I'm not a huge fan of thrillers, but I don't know, maybe maybe horror is something I could get into. If you have any like recommendations, I would love to hear your recommendations where like the horror is more on the like literary fiction end, or like horror you thought was just like really well written with like fleshed out characters. If you have any or any recommendations, I would love to hear it. Okay, uh, next would be favorite new author, Eddie Fortin, love her. Newest fictional crush. Don't have one. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I have one. He was a favorite character. <laughs> Both like main characters from the House of Mirth. So uh, Lily Bart and Loris, La Lawrence. La Lawrence. Lawrence. The male character. Uh, they were so complex. They were so like real people. Like not perfect with flaws. So well written. Oh, I love. It. There is a chapter. I never did this, but there's a chapter where I actually like underline some things. Yeah. So, and it's actually a conversation between Lily Bart and Lawrence, Lawrence Selden. So, yeah, it's lovely. It's chapter six, by the way. Book that made you cry. The House of Merv. I bawled my eyes out at like 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, not actually uh, reading the last chapter, but the chapter before that. Oh, it was so sad. I remember it distinctly. Like, there, were, it was a scene between those two characters that I just men mentioned. They were standing in front of a fireplace and having a conversation. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it was so sad. I was like hyperventilating, like tears were streaming down my face. I had to like put down the book for a second to like compose myself. It was a lot. <laughs> a book that made you happy. It's actually a graphic novel, and it's Woman World by Aminda Dalywal. Oh, I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, but it's a graphic novel and I need you to know... Okay, so it's a graphic novel about a world without men, so yeah, men just like died out naturally. <laughs> it was so... Okay, I need you to know that this doesn't have like a strong plot. It's kind of uh, like snippets from lives of uh, this woman living in this like new world. It's so funny, like, it's hilarious. I feel like it might not age well because some of the jokes were very... like, I don't know if you would understand them if you would read it, like, 10, 20 years from now. Like, what it was about, like, Beyonce's thighs. <laughs> because they were naming, like, a new... I don't know, like, some kind of new land and they were like, how about we call it Beyonce's thighs? They were like, Hell yeah. It doesn't sound funny, but like, it is. Yeah, for my five stars, it was, it was hilarious. Oh, the most be beautiful book you've brought so far this year. I received. I received it. Mm. I didn't really know how to answer this question because I've bought some like, pretty books, like uh, books with pretty covers this year, but nothing really stood out to me. So I don't know if my answer really counts, but let me show you in a second. So, the book I'm talking about is <laughs> this huge album. Um, it says, I'm not sure if it's backwards or not, or not, but it says art. And uh, it's huge and very heavy. And like the cover isn't like <laughs> gorgeous, but the inside is beautiful. Like, so, oh my god, okay. 
can you see anything? Yeah, I think, is it Impressionism? Yeah, so it's an art book <laughs> and you know, I think the inside is beautiful because it's like art from like uh, over 2,500 works from cave to contemporary. That's the title. So yeah, it's, it's real nice. I'm looking forward to understanding art. <laughs> and last question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And when I was making like my, li my list of like goals for 2020, one of my main goals was to read more Russian classics. And I didn't do that <laughs> so far. So I have Brother Karamazov actually in two tomes. What do you call that? I don't know. Uh, so I have that I could read Brother Karamazov by Dostoevsky. I also would like to read Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. Uh, but yeah, they're long. I would also... Um, I've heard about that book from Kate Files' channel, uh, the, Idiot, the, the Idiot by Dostoevsky, and it just sounds so lovely because it's about a character that's just so pure and so nice, and it just, yeah, appeals to me very much. So yeah, definitely those three. Yeah, another goal for me was to read more new releases. I'm not sure if it's like an important goal for me right now, but I would like to read The Glass Hotel by the end of the year if I can get my hands on it. The last one is why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. Well, I actually have it. This one, currently I'm reading Between the World and Me by Tanaisi Coates. And uh, I have to say his writing style is very poetic and I'm not really vibing with it. <laughs> um, also, I feel like I don't have enough like historical knowledge about like racism in America so I feel like I need more context this is actually about I think racism in Britain like England but I'm not sure um, I would also like to read Stamped because this is like a history of racism in America so I feel like this would give me like context to read like other books about racism so this one in Stamped are high up on my list. Yeah, uh, that's it. This was probably very awkward because uh, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, if you have any videos you would like to see from me, please tell me. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with my channel right now. Uh, I love books, I'm still reading books, I still would like to make videos uh, on YouTube, but I don't know if past like format of my videos was really like, suit me. Um, I really liked the, the videos I liked the most were discussion videos, so like the one about um, reading like critically and <laughs> the one where I like kind of talked about my problem with like um, book hauls and TBRs for me personally, uh, why it's hard for me to make those videos. So kind of discussion videos, those were really interesting and I like rewatching those videos compared to like other videos that I made. Yeah, so if you have anything you'd like to see from me, please tell me. I really would like to make a ranking of um, Jane Austen's books because I've read them all and it's Jane Austen July, so it sounds like a fun video to make. So. Yeah, oh my god, <laughs> I'm running out of breath. So, thank you for watching, if anyone's still here. And I know this is super late, but I really want to make this like kind of summary uh, of the first half of the year. And yeah, see you soon, bye!